Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to this six-part micro-series on decision analysis for agricultural development. I'm Corey Whitney, and I will be speaking to you about research done at the University of Bonn, um, the Horticulture Institute, and uh, a num number of other research institutions, which I'll, I'll mention. You can find a lot of the work that I talk about on uh, GitHub, uh, Open Access, if you look at my profile there, C.W. Whitney, and you can follow me on Twitter for more uh, information. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you, and you'll let me know if you have any questions or concerns here. We face a number of global sustainability challenges, and this is likely what has inspired you to get involved with um, agricultural research for development. Um, we generally agree that global sustainability or sustainability in general is based on a balance of uh, ecological, social, and economic conditions and that um, these overlap in various ways, uh, which is interesting for research, which are uh, places where we could possibly intervene to make sure that these are balanced and we can check as well to see uh, that things are working and, and how they're changing. Um, our main question really uh, in decision analysis for agriculture is how will any decisions that are made about agricultural production uh, ultimately influence future sustainability conditions of those production systems? So we try to take all these uh, holistic, holistically take all these factors into account and uh, help those decisions so that they do end up being the most sustainable possible. Of course, that uh, requires an understanding of complex systems and that there are many challenges in this. First of all, um, in order for us to apply decision analysis tools, we need to build uh, balanced causal models. So we have to have uh, try to incorporate as much information as possible to, in, to understand and by information, I mean knowledge, I mean relationships to understand how these uh, systems work. In order to do that, we recognize what we already know. We deal with imperfect information, randomness, multiple perspectives, uh, empirical evidence, as well as expert uh, and local information. And we try to make forecasts of system outcomes, that is the long-term sustainability outcomes of agricultural decisions. Um, we have to do that without, necessarily without perfect information for making a forecast, right? So there's some uncertainty, that's these big question marks here telling us that there's some, some stuff that we just don't know, we have uncertainty about. And uh, in this process, we can honestly communicate these uncertainties, we can show rather than giving uh, exact information and saying this decision will definitely have this app, this result, we can instead say we're uncertain, but uh, given our uncertainty, this is the kind of um, result that we, that we might expect. And this approach, decision analysis, or this body of approaches, really this theoretical framework, can meet these challenges. Uh, it has the potential to change the way we do research for development, and it can overcome challenges in supporting decisions through research. Of course, systems are very complex. Um, the behavior of the system actually arises from a number of factors and interactions. In order to make decisions about how to influence these systems, um, they need tools that really look at the whole system and how that, how that functions. Um, but how can we really do that? How can we study the behavior of a whole system? Can our usual research approaches address this? Maybe not. If we just go and measure the soil or we only measure um, some, some other factor, some minuscule factor of the whole complex system, will we really understand uh, what decision, what effects decisions will have on the farm? So as I said, this is going to be a six-part um, series. I will start by talking about various approaches in decision analysis and um, then go over really technically what it, what it is. What do I mean with this uh, decision analysis? What is that about? Um, offer some 
examples of model building, so how we do it, really the, the nuts and bolts of the process. I'll talk a bit about um, cognitive biases as a bottleneck to this approach and think about some ways of overcoming biases, some approaches that we use to make sure that we can incorporate this expert knowledge into the model building process without uh, introducing too much bias into the model building procedure. I'll give you a few case studies from Kenya and Uganda, and then I'll provide a few conclusions. So I'd like you to take some time now to think about uh, decisions for agricultural development, see what you've gathered from this so far, and maybe write down some of your ideas to share with the rest of your uh, colleagues and with me in the Slack group. And you can check out the next video, should be able to find it in the same uh, channel here. Enjoy the rest of this six-part series, and I'll see you in the next video.